Good morning. We will pay attention to share dividends today. Now remember that your authorized share capital consists of a million ordinary shares. That is the maximum number of shares that you can sell. You never use it for calculations. You only use it in the note. Issued share capital consists of the number of ordinary shares that was already sold and the issued share capital is used in calculations. Now, dividends is the way that a company divides the profits to the shareholders. Remember, the shareholders are the owners of the business. So, instead of having a sole trader or a partnership, in a company they have shareholders. And depending on the size of the company, the, they can have millions of shareholders in one company. Now, what is the purpose of a business? It is to make a profit so that the owners of the business can share in the profits. So these shareholders want to share in the profits. And this profit is divided between them uh, in according to dividends. So dividends is used to divide profits between shareholders. Therefore, that, this means that a dividend is an expense because it's paid out to the shareholders' owners uh, to divide the profit according to the number of shares they have. This dividend will reduce the profits of the business because it is paid out of the profits. The dividend is paid per share so that the people who have more shares will get a bigger dividend. And the people who have less shares will have a smaller dividend because they can only get dividends on the number of shares. So say for instance you've got 100,000 shares and they pay a dividend of 10 cents per share, you will get 10,000 rand dividend. So you get 10,000 of the total profit. If I have 50,000 shares and they give me 10 cents per share, I will get 5,000 rand out of the profits. It is a way to divide the profits according to the amount of capital that was contributed to the business. Now we get two different types of dividends. Interim dividends is paid in the middle of the year. So some of these shareholders invest all their money in shares. That means the only income that they have is out of the dividends that they receive from the profits of the company. They don't only want to receive money once a year. So dividends is declared twice a year so that shareholders can receive money twice a year. The interim dividend is declared and paid in the middle of the year. The whole purpose of this is that the people must get money immediately, so the interim dividend must always be paid immediately. You can never owe the money for interim dividend. It is always paid immediately. The final dividend that is declared is at the end of the financial year. The final dividend can be paid immediately, but normally this amount is paid at the beginning of the next financial year because there's not enough time to make out the payments and pay all the shareholders before the books are closed for the current financial year. The following information was obtained from Denel Limited for the year ended 28 February. On the 1st of March 2013, 100,000 ordinary shares were sold at 2 rand each. That means in your capital account, you will show that you've got a balance of 200,000 rand. Our current financial year ends on 28 February 2015. So any entries between the 1st of March 2014 and the end of the financial year 28 February 2015 is for the current year. So if I look at this date 31 August 2014 it is in our current financial year. 
This means that we will declare a dividend on all the shares that was already sold. Now, if we look at our Ori share capital account, the only shares that we have at this stage is that 100,000 that was sold at two rand each in the previous financial year. So I will have to work out the dividend on this capital that was obtained in the previous years. They declare a dividend of 10 cents per share. So if we look at this calculation, on the 31st of August, when the interim dividend is declared, 100,000 shares were already issued. We will therefore have to calculate the dividends on that 100,000 shares. The dividend is 10 cents per share, so it means that the shareholders will receive 10,000 rand. This dividend is an expense for the business, so I will debit my only share dividends account with the 10,000 to indicate that there's an expense of 10,000 rand. We owe the money to the shareholders, so the shareholders will be credited with 10,000 rand. This means that the only share dividend, that's the division of the profit, any a division of profit for any expenses that you pay will always be entered on the debit side of your ledger. The shareholders are the owners of the business. Why do we owe them money for the dividend? So it means that we have a liability here to the shareholders that the business must pay them money. So they're basically like a creditor at the moment and we indicate why do we owe the shareholders money, and it is for the dividends that was declared. Then we will pay out that money immediately, so the bank will be credited, and the shareholders for dividends is debited to cancel out the debt, so that we can show that no money is outstanding. An uh, alternative method can be used where the only share dividends is entered on the debit side but it's not taken to the shareholders on the credit side you show here immediately that this was paid and you will show that the bank is credited or the share dividends is debited both methods are correct the reason why i prefer the long method where you first show the expense and then you show that the expense is transferred to the shareholders because I show that we owe money to them. That is what will actually happen in practice, is that you can't pay out the money immediately the minute that you declare the dividend. So you will create an expense and show that this money is owed to the shareholders. Then an additional entry was, will be completed where you pay out the money. The main reason why I prefer this method is when we do uh, cash flow statements, quite often you have to use your shareholders for dividends account to determine what is the amount that was paid out for cash flow purposes. If you don't do this method, you quite often forget about the interim dividend that was paid during the year. But both methods are correct, so you can use any one of the two. On the 1st of September, um, the company decided to issue additional shares for at 3 rand each. So they're going to issue 400,000 shares at 3 rand each. That means 400,000 times 3, the capital will increase with 1,2 million. Now we've got the 200,000 from the previous year plus the 1,2 million for the current year. So my total capital at this stage is 1,4 million rand. That was the total money that was obtained from shareholders to provide capital for the company. What is very important here is to determine how many shares were issued 
to obtain that 1,4 million. So it means that I must take into account that we've already sold 500,000 shares because when we declare a dividend again, we will work it out on the number of issued shares. If we look at the next entry, we will see that they declare a final dividend of 40 cents per share. Now, how many shares were already issued? The 100 plus the 400. So it means that we will have to pay our dividends on 500,000 shares. And the dividend per share is 40 cents. So when we do this calculation, I will say at the end of the year, we've got 500 ordinary shares and we pay 40 cents per share. So that means that the dividend will be 200,000 rand. Ordinary share dividends is the expense. So I will indicate the expense increases on the debit side. So my total expense for ordinary share dividends therefore, is 210,000 rand. This dividend was debited to increase the expense. Who do we owe the money to? To the shareholders. So that means that I will credit my shareholders for dividends with 200,000 share dividends to show that the total amount that's outstanding at the end of the year was 200,000. So the total amount that had to be paid to shareholders for the year is 210. We already paid 10,000. So the outstanding balance that will be paid at the beginning of the following year will be 200,000 rand. This is very important to pay attention to this figure because quite often when we do cash flow statements, they don't give you the final dividend, but if they give you this closing balance of 200,000 Rand, it indicates immediately that that is the final dividend that was declared. You must pay attention to the information that is provided to you. The dates that they provide is very important. The date that the additional shares were sold will determine whether those shareholders are entitled to the interim dividend or not. If these new shares were issued before the interim dividend is declared, the new shares will also receive a dividend. So even if they only had the shares for two or three days, if they bought the shares before the interim dividend was declared, they, is in, they are entitled to this dividend. And the old shareholders and the new shareholders will then receive the interim dividend. If the new shares were issued after the interim dividend was declared, then the new shares will not receive the dividend because they didn't have these shares on, at the date that this interim dividend was declared. The ordinary share dividend account is debited to increase the expense. The shareholders, my owners, is a liability and we will credit shareholders for dividends to indicate that the business owes the money to the shareholders. Why do they owe it? For the dividends. And because they still owe the money to the shareholders, it means that the shareholders at this stage is a liability. Just to recap again, remember the date that the additional shares are sold during the current financial year is very important. If the shares were sold before the interim dividend was declared, they will receive the interim dividend. If the shares were sold after the interim dividend was declared, they will not receive the dividend. What did we learn today? Interim dividends are declared and paid in the middle of the year on all the issued shares on the date that it was declared. So interim dividends is in the middle of the year 
and it will only be paid out on issued shares on that date that the interim dividend was declared. Final dividends are declared at the end of the year on all the issued shares. The final dividends will normally be outstanding at the end of the year and will be paid at the beginning of the next financial year. It is very important to determine when the shares were issued during the current financial year. So you must determine the date that the new issue was made during the year. Because these new shareholders will only be entitled to dividends if the shares were sold before the dividends were declared. Only share dividends is the expense that is paid out of the profits and it will reduce the retained income or accumulated profit at the end of the year. So in a company, they don't have to pay out all the profits. The company can decide to keep some of the profits in the business to expand the business in the future or to provide for uh, expenses that can incur in the future if the economy is not very good. So they always retain some of the profits in the business. Shareholders are the owners of the business. In, and if we open an account for shareholders for dividends, this indicates that the shareholders is a liability. It's accredited to the company because they owe them money for dividends.